Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? How are you guys are doing today in this beautiful holiday season, man? Hey, this is Gregory Wiles coming live to you from Houston, Texas for this inspirational morning talk. For first time listeners, I'm on on Thursdays at 8.45 a.m. Central Time. That's our time here in Houston. You can calculate which time zone you are in. But it's a beautiful day here, a couple days before the 25th, which is Christmas Day, as most of us call it. But it's great here. Hope you guys have a wonderful season so far. But yes, today, guys, today, what I want to talk about, you know, last week we talked about um, what to do to get a financial um, blessings, what to do to get a financial blessings, because I know a lot of people going into the new year with the resolutions. And like I said, I usually do uh, prepare people for a fast, but I wasn't led this year to do that. But you still need to do your fast, still need to do a fast, clear the way for the new year. But I want to give people some scriptures because I know the a lot of um, some of the common things that people are going to be praying for in the new year. And I want to kind of prepare you for that. Do your fast. Uh, but then I can give you some scriptures to go along with that to help you be prepared for those resolutions. Right. So last week, like I said, we did about the financial blessings today. I want to talk about our kids, praying for our kids, because I know a lot of people I have a, a teenager. And I know the challenges raising kids, you know, even the internet now is a big challenge. They're going to school. Uh, it's it's so much, right? And, you know, some people with adult kids not doing what they do, not on the right track, you know what I mean? Who um, on drugs with the wrong set of friends being promiscuous out there. All these things we got to deal with as parents, right? But, um, so I want to give people some scriptures where they can use, man. Use the authority you have. I want to give you some scriptures that use your authority that you have to bring changes in those kids lives right because we sit and we can worry and we can complain to everyone about what they're doing that's not going to change things we're going to change things is using the authority you have with this word here right so first we can look at a few scriptures and at the end of it i can show you how to put it in a prayer and you can pray um for your children right um, first, I want to look at Psalms 127, 3. Psalms 127, verse 3. It said, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Let us start right there. Psalms 127, verse 3. It said, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. This is a New King James Version. He is saying, God is saying, children are a blessing. Number one, let's start there. He's saying, children are a blessing. The fruit of the womb is a reward. It's a reward. All right? So we're going to start with that one right there. This is a blessing. My child don't care how they be and what they're doing right now. Psalms 127 verse 3 tells me, that they are a blessing. That's a reward I got by having that child, right? We can start right here. So next, let's go on to Proverbs eleven twenty one. Proverbs eleven twenty one. It said, "Do hand join in hand. The wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered." Right? The seed meaning your children, meaning anything that comes from you, your children, children. They are going to get this reward. They say the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. So do hand join in hand. People come together and doing the wickedness. I said they're going to be not go unpunished. Don't worry about them. Right? They might trying to do you things, do your children things, whatever. He's saying don't worry them. They will not go unpunished. I can deal with them. But I want you to know. You righteous. Your children are going to be delivered from whatever they're going through. They can be delivered. They will be delivered. Okay? We got to believe this. Let's go to the next one. Psalms 112, 1 um, and 2. Psalms 112, verse 1 and 2. It said, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commandments. That's the same righteous, right? Blessed are those who fear the Lord and who find great delight in his commandments. Their children will not be, their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. All right, guys. So we got to go and use the authority we have. 
Don't go and, and complain about your kids and what they're doing and all that. You go and come, you telling God about this. You go and give him back his word. This is his word. So Taylor, good morning, good morning. How are you doing? Hope you're having a great day today. You give him back his word. Jeremy Grimes, good morning, good morning. Give him back his word, man. This is his word. So let's look at the next one here, Psalms 37, 25. Psalms 37, 25. This is what King David was saying. King David was saying, I was young and now I'm old, yet I never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. So King David was saying, look, since I'm a boy, you will boy coming up. Now I'm old, ready to depart this world, live a full life. And one thing I can tell you for sure, I never see the righteous forsaken nor their children begging bread. King David, one of man after God's own heart, one of God's most faithful servants, he telling you we can trust God. Because these promises were God talking about the righteous, he said he witnessed it in during his lifetime. He never see the righteous forsaken nor the children begging bread. So if you are righteous, righteous to mean you gotta be holding and down and a pastor and a preacher and all and all and all. You give your life to Christ, you follow his 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 his, his laws and his commandments to the best of your ability, you're gonna fall down, you get up and you keep going. It doesn't say you you know big bear in a robe and no 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 don't let people fool you. The righteous, you give your life to Christ, right? And you go on and follow his laws, right? You, you, you don't say you don't got no sin in your life. You give your life to Christ, you qualify for these blessings, all right? So the next one, Psalms 37, 4. Psalms 37, 4 said, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You take delight in him. You are the righteous. You're taking delight in him. He can give you the desires of your heart. What's the desires of your heart? Let him know what's the desires of your heart. Once the car say his will, we're going to get it, right? So let's go over these again, and then we can kind of put them in a um, in a prayer form so you get an idea, man. We're talking about our kids, man. We're talking about our kids, our grandkids. This world right now is a lot of stuff going on, man, and there's a lot of stuff to pull them in the wrong direction. So we want to make sure that they're taken care of, right? And not by worrying and not by complaining, by using this word here that God gave us. God said, look, I understand we're going to go on, but I also tell you, use my word, and I got them, I got them, I got them, man, right? So let's start again from Psalms 127, 3. It said, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb is blessed. So he done saying, you get the child is a blessing. That child to you is a blessing. That's what he's saying, right? It's a blessing. There's a heritage from him. The fruit of the woman's a reward. So we can start right there. Then we go on to Proverbs eleven twenty one. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. He's saying they got to be delivered. The seed of the righteous, they going to be delivered. No matter how the situation look right now. No matter how it look right now. He's saying... I gonna deliver them. And we gotta pray that they want the deliverance and everything. But he's saying, I'm going to deliver them because you are righteous. Psalms 112, 1 and 2 saying, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, the righteous, who find great delight in his commandments. Their children will be mighty in this land. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. This is serious promises he's making, and God's a man don't lie. He said, whatever he promised you, he gonna hold on to that promise. You remember with King, with King um, Solomon, he promised David he can keep someone on the throne and he can take care of Solomon and, and all of that, like his own child and all of that. And when Solomon screw up, when Solomon screwed up, God visited him twice. I might do that tomorrow or the plan doing that today, but then he lead me this way. Solomon is screwed up. And, and God come and visit him twice and say, Solomon, change your ways. And he gets so upset with him. He said, I'm going to rip this kingdom from you. But then he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? I can't take it from you. Because you know why I can't take it from you? Because I make a promise to your father, David. I'm going to take care of you and I'm going to keep you on the throne. And I'm going to look over you like you're my own son. But right now you're a wayward son. 
But I cannot take the kingdom from you, but I can take it from your children. I can take it from your son. But even I'm taking it from your son, I still can't take the whole thing. Because he was over the whole 12 tribes at the time. He was the second king that was over the, 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 the 12 tribes. He said, I still can't take the whole thing from your son. I can take I can take 10 of the tribes and, 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 and I can left him with the one. Let them two come together and make one the tribe of Judah. I still got to keep somebody from David lying on the throne because I make a promise to him. I make a promise to the man that was righteous and I got to keep the promise to him even though you screw up Solomon. Now you make it bad for your child because I would, he had to inherited the whole 12, 12 tribes. But you know what? I still got to keep a king on the throne for David because I make him a promise. Even though you wicked Solomon, you 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 slip off track and go out with all these women, I tell you not to go with Cardinal and pull you away from me. But I still got to hold a promise to make to make to King David because he was a righteous. So these promises here is just like that for me and your kids that he gonna do the same thing. He gonna be just as faithful. Oh, he was to David. He can be a faithful to us because he said his word does not lie. He cannot lie. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word, not a, a, a ink, not even the ink can even get a smudge of my word. He put his word over creation. So we can hold on to this. We can hold on to this, right? So Psalms, 1, Psalms 37, 25 David, same David, telling us, I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the children begging bread. He said, the righteous, you're not going to be forsaken, no matter how things look right now, because he might got to put us through some things to even bless us for them. He's saying, the righteous will not be forsaken, right? Nor the children begging bread. Then Psalms 37, 20, um, 4, saying, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So now when you go on your fast, Use scriptures like these. If it's your child you're praying for, you want to give him back his word to God. This is a promise you make. Am I holding you to it? He can say, well, good. That's my word. It's just like you're going to court, right? And you're fighting a case. When you're going fighting a case in court, you're going to case, um, you're going to the divorce court. You don't bring, bring up nothing about stealing, right? You don't want to bring laws about, well, judge, you know, in this thing, this one steal two chickens. and No, 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 no. You want to bring cases pertaining to what you're going to court for. And this is just what we're doing. We're going to the courts of heaven and we're petitioning for our children right now. So we bring in these laws pertaining to our children back to him. You said God in Psalms 127 verse 3 you said children are a blessing, right? So I'm going to try and put it in a little prayer format right now. Give you a little idea how you could use it. Because sometimes people say, well, how do I, you know, how do I go about praying this? And how do I go about using it? You could read it off like this, yeah. But then you could put it in a little prayer format to make it a little more juicy and make it a little more better for you, right? So you could say, you could start off by saying, you know, God, just thank you. You're on your fast, whatever you've done, your fast and everything. Or if you're not on a fast, just use it to pray. So God, just thank you. I come before you right now, Father God. As you know the situation of my children. And you don't need to go. He know the problem already, right? So you don't need to go and get little Johnny out to jail or get this one off of drugs and... You don't need to go into all of that. He know that kind of stuff, right? They, they're acting up in school. He know that. You can start out with that and say, God, you know the situation with my children. And you start out one time telling him it is. You're okay just for yourself. Because he know, right? But then you can always go in and say, God, even though what's going on with my child or children, your word in Psalms 127 verse 3 said, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, Father God. So thank you. Thank you for that child. Thank you for, for whatever called the child name. Thank you for my child, Father, because you said that's a blessing to me, Father God. So I want to thank you for that blessing. Your word for the states in Proverbs eleven twenty one. It said, though time join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Father God, I am the righteous. I, my child, is entitled to that promise, Father. So I just want to thank you for your word, guaranteeing me that my child will be the 
delivered because he's the seed or he or she's the seed of the righteous. The word for the states in, 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 in Psalms 112 verse 1 to 2. Father God, it said, blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commandments. It said, their children will be mighty in this land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Thank you, God, that my child, my children will be mighty in this land and live out their full purpose, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that promise. Your word further states in Psalms 37, 25, God, where King David, one of somebody who was after your own heart, one of your most faithful servants, said, I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the children bringing bread. So, Father God, I thank you. I don't matter how my situation looks, how the situation of my child looks, your word states the righteous never forsaken and the children will never be begging bread. I thank you that my child will be mighty. Thank you that they will be prosperous. Thank you they will be successful. Thank you that they will be delivered from whatever they're going through. You, you state whatever they're going through, whether they're acting up at school or on the drugs or or got bad friends or what, thank you, they'll be delivered from it, Father God, because your word stayed that, and you said your word, your word, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one stroke of, of, of the ink will pass away from your word, Father God. You put your word over creation, Father God. You say your God that does not lie, Father God, so I just want to thank you, and I'm holding these promises I hold in faith, Father God. I don't care what I see in front of me, Father God, because seeing brings doubt, Father God. But this word, if I believe in this word, Father God, I know I'm going to get the result because your word cannot you cannot lie, Father. So I just want to thank you, Father God. You said if I take delight in the Lord, he will give me the desires of my heart. My desires of my heart is to see my children prosper. The desires of my heart is to see them be delivered, Father God. So I just want to thank you that your words are going to be mighty in this land. So I'm not going to be fooled over going on right now. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm going to hold on the word knowing that you said they must be delivered because they're the seed of the righteous. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for all the people listening to this. Thank you for who can listen to in the future, Father God. And they can trust your word, Father. They can trust your word knowing that you're a God that does not lie. And if you make a promise, you going to fulfill it. We just got to believe that. We got to believe that. Look at all the stories you laid out for us in the Bible. And you never relinquish on a promise. So why are you going to start now? So Father, I just thank you. I just thank you that my children will be saved. They will be delivered. They will be mighty in this land. In Jesus' name. All right, and you just throw it in a truth in Mars Hubbard. Good morning. Good morning, Pamela Fontanelli. Good morning. So you put it in a prayer format like that. It ain't got to be exactly, but make sure you're using these scriptures, even if you're just reading them and giving it back to him, right? Because this world right now, the enemy going to attack our kids. You know, if you get our kids from early, he knows game over, right? But we got something for him. We got something. We're talking around people because we got power over, over him. And we're going to use our authority. Right, guys? So, guys, if I don't pop back on before um, Christmas Day, which is Monday, I want to wish everyone a Merry, Merry Christmas. But, um... I may come back on and do some some something before then. But if not, have a great Christmas, guys, and I'm gonna see you guys next week. Alright, thanks. Goodbye.